My handwriting is ass. It's always been ass. I apologize to all of my teachers, but lucky for me, barely legible type is now in fashion. Custom drawn typography is a great way to spice up your artwork and take a break from the mouse and keyboard. We're not touching any grass today, don't worry. We'll be seated right here at our desk. All we need is some pen and paper, among other things. Here are some of my favorite techniques for rough, gooey, and fun typography. Before we begin, I wanna mention that I just dropped two new texture kits on my website today, and they absolutely rock. The broken color textures are the best way to add printed looking color depth to your designs. I use these every time I'm texturing something. It's been my secret sauce texturing wise, but now I'm letting you in on that secret. And the assorted paper texture kit is a kit full of 100, yes, 100 vintage paper textures. We got ripped paper, folded paper, distressed paper, 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 you name it. It's just a must have for any texture fiend like me or like you, hopefully. You can go grab those now for 15% off to give your designs that delicious texture. All right, let's check out this list. If you've been to a Chipotle or Subway recently, you're in luck. Hopefully you stole some of their napkins to put in your glove box or just whatever you wanna do with those napkins because the first technique here is very simple but very effective. It's just a pen or a marker on a napkin. So hopefully you do have a napkin somewhere in your household. If you don't, that's not normal. Does it have to be a napkin? Yes. Why? Just trust me. Something about the way the ink bleeds on the napkin is just delicious. And also the thinness and the texture of the napkin helps give whatever you're writing some extra twang and distress. So yeah, whip out an old napkin, preferably months old, and that's been sitting and burning in your glove box in your car. I'm just joking. Bring out any napkin you got. Find yourself a nice pen or marker. You know the deal. I got a few options here for myself. We just got a uh, Micron Sharpie a nice little expo marker and a pen. And I'm gonna use all of these on that napkin and show you what the results are like. Really very simple. And once you're done, you can take a picture of this with your phone or a camera, but you could just use your phone. Put that in Photoshop and throw on a threshold adjustment. Adjust the adjustment until it's just the type that you see. Then you can select out the background and you have your type beautifully laid out for you. I actually used this exact technique on official merchandise for Green Day. I don't know if I still have the original picture of what I wrote on that napkin, but I definitely wrote Green Day on some sort of napkin or paper towel, scanned that in with my phone, put that in Photoshop, did some minor adjustments to it, and this was the final result. This was sold on Green Day's tour, which is really, really cool. Okay, now what if you haven't been to Chipotle recently, or you just got no napkins in your house, you nasty mother. Let's check out technique number two. Here's something that everybody should have in their house, sriracha or any hot sauce. I'm not really a, a sriracha household. Nothing wrong with sriracha, but I'm much more of a Valentina guy. This is Melinda's, which I have never tried. This was a gift to me from my girlfriend's father. Now, what does hot sauce have to do with graphic design? Well, grab your favorite hot sauce, preferably sriracha or anything that has this nice little squeezable top to it. I don't know what you'd call it, but basically you have a lot of control when you squeeze the hot sauce out of this thing. For whatever reason, they give you a lot of control like you're writing. It's like they want you to write with it. Just start writing with the hot sauce. Whatever surface of your choice, I'd recommend paper. This is definitely a fun technique, but I would recommend that you dispose of this correctly once you're done with it. And by that, I mean, do not waste your hot sauce. You have to lick it up off that page. So once you're done writing with this hot sauce, again, just take out your phone, snap a picture of it, put that in Photoshop, tack on a threshold adjustment, or even just leave it be. Maybe add a, a levels adjustment, but select out the type and do whatever you want with it. The result is a very cool, saucy piece of type. Now you're obviously not limited to just hot sauce. I actually found another fun way to do this using caking gel. I don't really know what this is. I found it in the cake making uh, part of the supermarket. And it's just gel that I guess you, you know, use for cake. And I actually think you use to write on cakes with this. So we're still using it as intended. I figured this out when I was doing that project for Hard Jewelry where I made a cake for them for their six year anniversary. You can see that right here, pretty cool, right? So I made them a cake pretty much and I photographed that and we were gonna use that for some merch. And so I had bought this to write on the actual cake, but then I figured it might look cool if I just wrote it out on some paper, scanned that in too and use that as a little supplementary element. And I think it came out great. Just check it out. What do you think? Pretty cool, right? Okay, I've been gatekeeping this last method for the past like four years now. So before I mention it, go ahead and give me some props for opening up my heart to all of you and subscribe to my channel, like the video. Okay, and my final and favorite technique for custom drawing type, ink. It's just ink, whatever ink you want. I'm using Black Star Waterproof India ink. I've also got this little Bombay Blue India ink. 
Color doesn't really matter in this case, but this is the real deal. This is what I've used for like 90% of the custom type I've done over the past three, four years. Really, I've just been writing stuff out with really bad handwriting and y'all just treat it like some cool typography. So now the secret's out. All I'm doing is taking some ink, putting that on paper, tail as old as time. The cool thing about this is when I first tried experimenting with this ink, I opened it and I was like, damn, I don't have a, a brush to dip this in. What am I gonna do? So I just took the actual ink dropper from the ink like cap. So this specific ink has a cap that's also an ink dropper, which is really, really cool. Probably should not have worn white for this video, huh? Anyway, you get the idea. So I took the actual ink dropper from the cap and I just started writing with the ink dropper. And it's surprisingly such a fantastic way to do it. You get some nice variable width in there, some splotchy elements, just very raw. I do this all the time now. Here's what it looks like in my artworks. This one in particular is one of my favorites and I actually have it hanging up on my wall right here. Pull this off of my pegboard. This is a postcard that I did for one of my clothing drops that I did about a year or two ago. And so the metallic up here is just a font that I did a lot of grunging up on. And then the actual waist type down here was made using this exact technique. And I'm sure you could tell because it's pretty rough and just odd looking. But yeah, that says waste. And it was done just by using the ink dropper on a piece of paper. Here's that poster, by the way. I'm very proud of this. I have it up here right on top of my computer. And I have it right over there behind me. You can barely see that. I'll try to zoom in. I'm not gonna mess with my whole camera right now. Oh, you can see that poster right there. Metallic waste. So yeah, just writing some letters with the actual ink dropper. Pretty unexpectedly awesome. Again, I just take a picture with my phone, which you wanna do in a timely manner, by the way, before the ink dries or it drops. I throw that picture in Photoshop. I usually add a small Gaussian blur just to soften up the type a little bit. And then I add a threshold adjustment on top of that. And again, select out the type and boom, you've got your cool custom type right there waiting for you. And those are my top techniques for fun, lively, custom drawn type. Let me know which one you're gonna try out down in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe for more videos just like this. I post these every week to help you become a better designer. Love you, peace out.